And if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you subscribe. We get lots and lots of people that watch our videos that don't subscribe. Make sure if you're on Facebook, you hit the subscribe button or go to our channel and subscribe. Don't forget to do that. Like and share our videos. And don't go away. At the end of this video, we're going to bring you some information you're going to want to hear. All right, we already debarbed the hook, and this is a size 10 dry fly hook. So we're going to tie the gray thread on, and this is going to match the quill, stripped peacock quill. Now, for the tail, we're going to tie in some lemon wood duck, and we're going to make that the same length of the shank of the hook. Now, we're going to strip a peacock curl for the base, and you want to use one or for the body, and you're going to want to get one of the feathers way, one of the peacock curls way down at the base, so it's real long and real thick. And then you're just going to run your pencil the way I show you in, in the video here, that direction, and that'll strip all the hairs off and make a completely smooth peacock curl. Then you're going to tie that in, and you're going to make start making taper in your body, get your body ready, because all you're going to do is wrap this peacock curl to represent the body. You don't want it real paper thin or needle thin so you make start building up the body now you're going to wet your fingers and wet in that peacock curl and let that soak for a little bit put some fingernail polish or head cement or hard as nails on the body where you just wrap the thread and let that sit and let that water soak into that peacock curl Now we're going to wrap that peacock curl right up to the thorax area. Now you take your head cement, put a nice coat on that, them wraps, or you can use your UV resin, coat that good, and then they do it hardens. If you're using uh, like uh, clear as nails or fingernail polish, make sure you wait a long time. Make sure that's completely dry before you go any further. Now, we're going to tie in the bottom part of the feather, that the really non-stiff parts of the feather. And we're going to tie in a dart dun. And we're only going to get a couple wraps. We don't want to get into the stiff part of the feather.
Now remember, I'm not gonna get in when as soon as, as soon as I get into the stiff part, I cut, I stop wrapping it. Um, you need to take these feathers after you use the soft part and keep it for your adults if you're gonna do cat skills or style dry flies. That's what I did. So now what you're going to do here is pull back and down and then put some thread wraps on the hairs because you're going to trap them down at an angle away from the eye of the hook like that to represent legs. Now what I'm going to do here is trap, uh, cut off any of the feathers, quill the feathers that got on the ha the hackle fibers that get on top or on the side or up or anywhere near the eye of the hook. I'm going to trim them off and they'll go back down more of an angle when we do the next step. Now we're going to take some more of that lemon wood duck, a nice clump of it this time, and we're going to tie it down on top of the hook. And then when we got it trapped down, we're going to form a head of this fly. And we're going to whip finish it. It, put some head cement on it, or hard as nails, or whatever kind of way of you like to finish it, or not. Okay, we're done. Let's take a closer look at this fly right now. Now I know I just made all you wet fly fishermen cringe and fly tires cringe. That's the first wet fly I've tied. Uh, I usually don't fish wet flies. Um, but the reason why I decided to tie this one for you guys is this fit, this fly, sorry, not the fish, the fly, hatches in a way that most mayflies don't. You know, most of your mayflies start as a nymph, they hit the surface, go into a shock, and hatch. Um, this one doesn't. This one hatches, goes, it starts to go as a nymph, clings on the rocks behind downstream on the backside of rocks and stuff, out of the direct current, and goes into a shuck and hatches there. And it comes to the surface as an adult hatched fly in the current. Then when it hits the surface, it dries its wings and comes out. And that's how the quill cool gordon emerges. So the wet fly, you would fish this if you see the taking the the mergers or the out the surface, you want to tie this as a wet fly on, representing that fly coming to the surface as a doll. And that's the only reason I tied this one because it's kind of the emerger. I've seen a lot of people on YouTube and other places tying an emerger, and it doesn't make sense that when they hatch on the bottom of the creek and come to the surface as an adult, that you would tie an emerger that's merging on the surface because it's not really happening that way. It's going through the current and when it hits the surface it's a fully hatched doll and it's one of the reasons why we like quill goins I think is because they're stuck there for a while drying their wings because they hatched underneath the current in the bottom of the creek and it takes them a longer time they sit on the surface a lot longer drying their wings and the fish has lots of time to decide whether they want to eat them or not so you want to tie these wet flies up because it's actually the merger pattern of 
the Quill Gordon, or the Quill Gordon, yes. So tie this one up, get it in your boxes. Thank you for this information. Thanks for staying at the end. Like I say always, if you stay at the end of the videos, you'll get additional information on each fly we tie. Um, I did have a book. I just told you basically all that was right here. I have a little hatch chart. And it basically tells you the nymph, as you can see, um, that's a blue quill. Sorry. Okay, here's a quill gordon. See that? That's the fly we just tied. Right there. That's because the nymph, they use that as the nymph because the, there is no merger in the nymph. Unless one break, see now what happened is the nymphs will break free in the current as they're trying to go to the back of the rocks and that's why you fish the nymph. So, tie these wet flies up and uh, thank you for bearing with me on this tie and uh, they'll work. So tie them up.